بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد واله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Inshallah, tonight I will finalize the discussion about um, the concept of shahada or a person who is shaheed, martyrdom and martyrs. We initiated our discussion just because it was the very title that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was continuously entitled with not only while or after his martyrdom but even in the time of Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he was entitled with the same description <coughs> so it was not only after uh, the year 61 which is the year that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was brutally killed, uh, savagely martyred, but in the time of Holy Prophet, he was predicting uh, this whole scenario. And then he said uh, this description to the following companions, to a very close companions, not many of them, but to some of them. We do have some ahadith from Holy Prophet himself to have mentioned this title Sayyid al-Shuhada for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Of course the very first person who had this title is Hamza uh, Abdul Muttalib but then uh, the second person is uh, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. In some of also supplications we do have barely of course this title to be attributed to Ali ibn Abi Talib as well. So we do have already three people. But then mostly the first two one, Hamza, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, and then also uh, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. These two have been well known to bear this kind of title within themselves, or with themselves, of course. Um, now we want to focus upon the concept of sh um, Shaheed and Shahada. Why we say, well, technically, who is a person, uh, who is that person to be called as Shaheed? I mean, what is the definition of Shaheed? Well, basically, we define the term in this way that a person who will sacrifice his life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person is to be called as Shaheed. Okay? This is the basic uh, definition that we have. But then now sometimes we'll have this question in our mind that uh, why shaheed? Why we don't, for example, call that person to be maqtool, like killed, like murdered, like, for example, some other titles. In Arabic literature, to put it in other words, uh, the meaning of shahada or shahida or shah, mushahada, they come from, for example, to see something to observe something, okay? Like, for example, nowadays, the Arabs, they will use when they won't talk, for example, that someone has seen something, they use the term like shahada, like mushahada, like um, different derivations of the same root and origin. Uh, so if this is the case that, for example, like shahid means to see something or someone who has seen something, why a person... Uh, who has been killed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been titled, I mean, but shahada or shaheed or istishhad. So what is the reason? What is the connection between two? So there should be always a kind of um, connection and relationship between a concept that we will use and between its instances and examples out of our mind. So for example, if I say that someone is shaheed and then the meaning of shahada means to see something, to bear witness some, sometimes. So what is it to a person who has been killed for the sake of Allah? So what is the concept, the meaning of the concept to 
of course that person but this is actually what we want to do there are some verses in holy quran that the same term and word has been used like for example in chapter Baqarah verse 143 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa kathalika ja'alnakum ummatan wasatan litakunu shuhada ala nas wa yakuna ar-rasul alaykum shahida so right now now the question is dear brothers and sisters holy prophet so what is well known idea we do have some of the ideas also as well but what is the famous idea is that well holy prophet died with natural death so he was not martyred this is the famous idea that we do have and mostly historians they believe in this there are some very uh, let's say unknown ideas to say that for example holy prophet was poisoned and then in a very gradual process by a jewish for example old lady those stuff and things that they may say but this is not very famous I mean, then the idea is not very, uh, um, of course, uh, something that we can uh, trust. I mean, not truthful, not very trustworthy, not very well documented. That is why we say, okay, Holy Prophet went uh, well, forward to his demise by his natural death. Nothing, nothing special just happened or took place, according to our well, very limited understanding. So, but then, why Holy Prophet has been called in this specific verse as to be Shaheed already, at least in the time of the revelation of this specific verse, Holy Prophet was not a martyr. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim again. Indeed, we have made you as a moderate, balanced uh, nation. لِتَكُونُوا shuhada alana. So, you will be the shuhada over other people. And then Holy Prophet will be also shaheed about you or over you or against you or for you or to you. So whatever. Um, now the question is, it seems that shaheed a little bit distinct from our mental understanding of the concept has got another meaning as well. Because this, this very term, when has been used in this specific ayah and then verse, Holy Prophet was alive, he was receiving the revelations, why he has been called as Shaheed? This is actually what, what I want to do. I want to, well, open another side of the word Shaheed for you. Something which is other than this very famous meaning that mostly we do have in our mind so that you will understand maybe a, uh, a better explanation of the word shaheed inshallah so let us reflect on this specific verse we have made you to be a very moderate in between let's say ummah nation what does it mean that we are between between what and what وسط means between means moderate means balanced between two extremes mostly well, this is something that will come as an assumption to our mind what are those two extremes so basically when we refer to the interpreters of Quran uh, we grasp this meaning that okay now we have to go and then have a kind of flashback to the history of Holy Prophet what are those other for example nations that they were living in company with Holy Prophet whether they were polytheists or Ahlul Kitab. Okay, we, these are the two very well-known famous tribes that they were living also in Arabic Peninsula in different regions and cities like Hejaz, like for example Mecca, Medina, like Oz Khajra, then other names of the tribes that they were famous of course, in Quraysh also. So whether they were polytheists, Mushrik, or they were the people of the book, like an Nasara, like for example Yahud, so let us uh, have a reflection and concentration over these two tribes. So polytheists and then Nasara. We have materialism and then we have a kind of chastity, a kind of monasticism, a kind of uh, asceticism, a kind of rohbaniya, as I may say it for you to may understand it better. So for example, in polytheism, 
they were really uh, let it watchful about this dunya. So whatever they wanted to do was with regard to this dunya, like this material world. So even their God was a material God, something that we can see, something that we can touch, something that we can donate, something that we can present our gifts, something that we shed the blood of the animal for its sake, something visible, something physical, something that I can go to that shrine and I can see it. I can touch it, I can circle around it, and that's it. So this is the one side of the issue that we have polytheists. Everything physical, everything limited to this world, everything madhya, everything uh, tangible, let's say. And the other side, recite the salawat, please. For it, yeah, what happened to this? Someone just take care because I think there's a pain inside the stomach. <coughs> okay. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Okay. So this is one side of the issue that we have polytheists. Another or second part of or side of the issue are those uh, people of book, Nasara. Like, for example, what kind of chastity, what kind of monasticism I'm talking about, that, for example, the people of the book, they relieve themselves from the, the material world, sticking to supernatural or, let's say, spirituality more than enough. Or, let's say, they were too spiritual. Then, if, if they are spiritual, it's, it's something good. Like, for example, I will give you one example of Nasara and those uh, maybe uh, monks and nuns specifically that they were living at the time of the Holy Prophet. Like, for example, they uh, prohibit themselves, they refrain themselves from marriage, for example. Okay. It was a kind of monasticism that they prescribed for themselves in order to approach God they already invalidate or they all already uh, illegitimized something which was legitimized. And then this is by itself a kind of blameworthy action. Even Holy Prophet in that story of, you know, uh, his wives, and then uh, he, he just abstained himself from some uh, legitimate uh, let's say, things of, of this donor, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, why you are just uh, illegitimizing something that is already in my religion halal? Why you are just um, doing haram to something that is halal already? This is something that is blameworthy as well. Okay? And not, of course, for Holy Prophet, because Holy Prophet was doing that harm to himself. But then sometimes you will generalize that one so that people will understand that maybe this is a part of religion. Now this is blasphemous. This is not something that, for example, I will say, okay, I did it to myself. That is harm that I want to do it to myself. And then who cares? Yes? Who cares? Uh, but then when you generalize it, of course, so many people would care about it. This is not specific to me. So Nasara and Masihayun, let's say, the Christians, they generalize this as a part of their religion that marriage will abstain a person from monasticism, from approaching God. Because now this is a part of the desire that people will follow in their life. And then it will... Recite the salawat, please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin. And... Um, Okay, anyhow, in any case, we have two, uh, I was saying that we have two extremes. Then now Muslims, they came or they, they turn out to be that middle balanced way in between. They are not very materialistic, not very like those people following chastity that is not being approved by religion. We, as, as scholars, as for example, something that, for example, we do have in, in uh, interfaith dialogue, that when we go to um, some, some, for example, Christian um, schools, uh, 
so we are having the same position. We, we go and then talk to some, let's say, uh, Orthodox, I don't know, Protestant or uh, what was that another name? I just forgot. Catholic. So Catholic ones, for example, especially Catholics, of course. We do have also some certain regulation in Orthodox as well, but then for Catholic mainly. <clears throat> we'll go and talk to them like the missionaries, missionaries like, for example, lecturers. So we'll just uh, exchange the ideas. We'll say that we, we do marry, of course. And there is no other problem with that. But then for them, this is a kind of surprise. And therefore, for example, for Catholics, I mean, th those normal people, they will come and ask us in that, those interfaith dialogues that, really, are you uh, marrying? We say, yes, of course, what's the problem of that? Uh, they say that, well, our, let's say, the pops, for example, they never marry, and then that's, that's interesting. So sometimes they will come with this, oh, there is no any, uh, conflict, there is no any controversy between, for example, marrying someone at the same time being the way of God. What's the problem of that? So Islam is that middle way. Not We are not too far, for example, from material world. Marriage is something materialistic, of course. And we do have certain ahadiths and traditions from Holy Prophet. And nikaho sunnati. Faman rahima an sunnati many. Even to that, that extent, that if, if you just... Um, uh, refrain yourself and prohibit yourself from this sunnah tradition of holy prophet already you're not from a prophet to that degree it is important and then not too for example into materialistic materialism let's say this is ummatun wasat now we have been called as ummatun wasat because of this moderation that we are following in our lifestyle we are the shaheed shuhada over those two extremists means that, to put it in another expression, we are that balanced measure. We are that uh, very, let's say, reference that accordingly uh, to be, for example, extremist would be identified with. So always, for example, you have this scale so that you will understand whether this is balanced or which, for example, the, another side is heavier than, for example, another. So we are that scale. We are that very normal weight. We are, according to this verse of Quran, Muslims, as that measurement, that very balanced measurement, so that the extremist or extremism would be identified with. That is why we have been called as shuhada al nas. It has nothing to do, for example, sometimes we will mistakenly say that shuhada al nas means in the day of judgment we'll just judge against some people so that we are shuhada ala nas. This is a literal understanding of that. I cannot deny this as well. Maybe also the consequences of being that very measurement, very normal measurement, very basic measurement of something to also bear witness against someone in the day of judgment. But basically it is not that very important consequence of that to be called as ummatun wasat. So, <clears throat> Then the verse continues, وَيَكُونُ الرَّسُولَ عَلَيْكُمْ shahida. Can we say, okay, now because we are the Ummat Wasat, we are that moderate nation, we are the best? We know that so many Muslims, even so-called Shias, they are actually even worse than some Christians, even worse than some atheists, unfortunately to say that. We know. So can we say, for example, that uh, we are even even having that very bare minimum lifestyle of religious life. Still, we are that umma wasat that we can bear witness against others. Already, I have I have been de let's say deviated. So how can I, for example, be a witness to a person who is better than me, although being a Christian? Morally speaking, they are better than us sometimes. Although they should not be like that. I mean, we are Muslims. We have been fortified with the most complete version of religion of God. We have to be better because already we have the facilities that they don't have. But unfortunately, we're misusing sometimes the opportunities that we have access to. Uh, but then, وَيَكُونُ الرَّسُولَ عَلَيْكُمْ shahida. Then, they are not going to be that measurement. Already we are the measure for them. So who would be our measure? Then Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So that is why Holy Prophet has been called as Shaheed. Shaheed or Shaheed in this meaning. Not for example, being a martyr for the sake of Allah, a person who sacrificed his life for the sake of Allah, who is attending the war for the sake of Allah. Now let's view the value of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam in this way. Not like normally we say Sayyid al Shahada means a person who is just being killed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and now he is the master of all those people. Means by his sacrifice, he could gain and obtain that level of humanity that he, be, he would be very close to the position of Holy Prophet as that very ultimate measurement for all Muslims. When it is the case for all Muslims, it means for all humanity. Because Muslims are the measure for the rest of the world. When a person like Holy Prophet is the measure for the Muslims, means already he is the measure for all humanity. And then Sayyidu Shahada means Imam al Hussein alayhi salam would be that ultimate measure that is balanced, that is uh, perfected, let's say. And then all people are to be estimated, I mean, or to be calculated in the day of judgment according to the behavior of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. I think this kind of explanation of the word martyrdom or shaheed gives more importance to what Abu Abdullah al-Hussain did to be a simple, for example, martyr who is the master of all other martyrs. Please also, we can think about it. We can just put it into dialogue. Thank you very much. Not to prolong the lecture, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our truth Imam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal the sick people, to return the strangers to their homeland, and at the same time to accept the intercession of Ahlul Bayt because of this holy month, inshallah. And then do not bring uh, the natural death to us. Bring shahada, of course, as the final stage of our life, inshallah. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa